Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for T's. We have been solving T's math problems out of this book here. The official study guide for T's. The official study manual 2021. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today, we'll do some work that you will find, some a topic that you will find on page number 142. 141 rather. 141 is where it starts, 142. And the topic is rational numbers. What are rational numbers and how do we go around, how do we go around ordering them uh, either in a increasing uh, order or decreasing order. That's what it is. So let's begin, shall we? Let's begin with the very fundamental question. What is a rational number? What, what is a rational number? What makes a number, what qualifies a number as being rational? I'm going to start with something very, very simple, something very basic, because it is something sometimes I find people get confused. Let's start with the lesson in English language. We are here for math, but let's start with English language. Here are the nouns, and here are the adjectives. For example, logic. Logic is a noun. Do you have any logic behind your, behind your, behind your work? Uh, was there any logic to, to, to your deed? The adjective would be logical. Logical. The noun here is rationale. What was your rationale? What were you thinking? What was going through your mind? Did you have any rationale at all? And the noun and the adjective would be rational. That was a rational decision. That was a rational thing to do. That was a rational act. Rational is adjective. And then we have reason. What was your reason? Well, that seems reasonable. That seems reasonable. That's the adjective. Adjective of reason. Reason is the noun. Is reasonable. Noun is of rationale. Rationale is a noun. Adjective of rationale will be rational. The noun is logic. Logical. Now what I want you to understand is that what we're talking right now, what we're discussing right now, rational number, has absolutely nothing to do with any of this. This is English language, this is not math. In mathematics, when we talk about a number being rational, we're not saying, oh, this number is so logical, this number makes sense, the other number is so illogical, uh, so irrational, you can't reason with him. That's not what it means. A rational number in mathematics is an entirely different animal in itself. What is a rational number? That's not what this means. Do you understand? It has nothing to do with the definition is defined in English language. In mathematics, the term rational in mathematics, it's a mathematical term. In term rational, when you describe a number as being rational, rational number simply means rational number simply means simply means that it is possible to express that number, to express that number as a ratio, as a ratio of two numbers. That's all. There are some numbers that cannot be expressed as a ratio of two other numbers. Now we'll come to that in a second. Let's look at some example. For example, for example, one quarter. You see, that's a number that has been expressed as a ratio of two numbers, one over fourth. Uh, how about uh, one one third? How about how about three? Can we express three as a ratio of two numbers? The answer, of course, is yes. Three can very easily be expressed as as three over one, if you like, or six over two, or 30 over 10. If a number, if a quantity can be expressed as a ratio of two numbers, it is called a rational numbers. And rational numbers come in two flavors. Rational numbers come in two flavors. 
we need room. How, where can we put it? They come in in two flavors. Either, either they're going to have, either they're going to have a terminating decimal. or a decimal with some pattern. A decimal with some pattern, a pattern that repeats forever and ever and ever. It does not end, it is not terminating, but it does have certain pattern to it. Let's look at some example on the top. We need the room so we have to raise this thing. So again, it simply means it is possible to express as a ratio of two numbers. And they come in two flavors. So let's look at first terminating decimals. For example, we just looked at it. We just look at some example. One quarter. That's a rational number. It's a rational number. You can you can argue it two ways. You can rational number because you can say clearly we express as a ratio of two numbers. Or if if it were written in a decimal, if it were written in decimal, it would be a terminating decimal. There you go, it ends. It's a terminating decimal. It ends, that's it. 0 0.25, ends the story. Or, this guy is a rational number also. This guy is a rational number because I express it as a ratio of two numbers. Or, you can argue that it's a rational number because even though, even though it does not end, there is a pattern. It's just 0 0.33333 forever and ever. I'm in. There is a pattern there. Here's another example. Of a rational number, one nine is a rational number because this is being expressed as a ratio of two numbers. Or if you were to express it in, in the form of a decimal, it will have a pattern. One nine will have a pattern. Point one 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 forever and ever. And if you stop to think about it for a second, it should make sense that one over nine should be point one 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 forever, because one nine is one third of one one third. One third times one third is one nine. So if one third is 0 0.3, one nine should be a third of that. One, one, one forever. Here's another example. One over 11. It could have a pattern. Zero, nine, zero, nine, zero, nine, forever and ever. If you were to divide, if you were to divide one by 11, if you were to divide one by 11, put a decimal, put a zero there, we can't divide it. So you put another zero, it becomes a hundred. Then it goes nine times 99, becomes a one. You put a zero there, if it doesn't do anything, you put on a zero, becomes a hundred, then ninety-nine, then you point, it just goes on forever and ever. Nine, zero, nine, zero, nine, zero, nine, zero, nine. And there are many, many like that. Some of them are a string of just two, sometimes three, sometimes even four or five or six, where there are six digits that come in certain pattern that repeat forever. And that is a rational number because if you wanted to, you could express that that number. As long as it has a pattern, as long as it has a pattern, no matter how weird the pattern is, no matter how complicated the pattern is, as long as the decimal place repeat in certain pattern, that number can be expressed as a ratio of two different numbers. One number on the, one whole number at the top, another whole number at the bottom. And that makes, that's what makes it rational. There are some numbers that are irrational, they, that cannot be expressed as a ratio. Let's take a look at them. I didn't want to I didn't want to do any of this thing because all of this thing that we're talking about is actually completely irrelevant. It will not appear on the exam. I do not know why these people in their rationale, in their logic, in their in their world, they think that they're being cued by using the term ordering rational numbers. If you look at the top of page 142, why couldn't they simply say ordering numbers? Why did they have to be so cute? Because then we have to talk about what the hell, what the bloody hell is a rational number? That's what we're doing right now, even though in the exam you don't need this knowledge. I'm just satisfying your curiosity. So let's take a look at irrational number, which cannot be expressed as a ratio of two numbers. So here's an example of an irrational number. Irrational numbers are Irrational numbers cannot 
irrational numbers cannot be written as a ratio of two numbers. That's where the word rational comes from. I left it out. I left out very crucial thing. So this is what's going on. You see, this is just like we had rationale, which became rational, just like we had logic, the noun was logic, it became logical, just like we had the noun reason, which became reasonable in English language. In mathematics, we have a noun, this ratio, ratio is a noun, ratio simply means this is a ratio, 3 8. And since 3 8 can be written as a rash, 3 8 can be written. Since this quantity can be written as, as, as a ratio, uh, 3 8 actually would be 0.125 times 3, whatever that happens to be. I don't know where I, how I started with 25 and 12 and a half. It would be 370. I'm not making any sense. 3 8. 3 8, 2 8 is 0.25. 108 is 125. 5. There you go. So if you were to write this thing, if somebody were to give us this quantity, if somebody were to come, come up to us and to give this quantity 0.375, first thing we notice is that it's a terminating decimal. It's either terminating or it has a pattern. This one is terminating. If it's terminating, it is possible to write this as a ratio of two numbers, and the ratio of these two numbers is 3 8. 3 8. That's the ratio. And since it can be written in a form of a ratio, the noun is the noun is ratio, adjective. Since it can be written in the form of a ratio, therefore it is a rational number. That's what makes it adjective. That's what it is. Rational is simply the adjective of ratio. Nothing to do with rationale, nothing to do with logic, nothing to do with thinking, nothing to do with being reasonable. It is simply adjective of the word ratio in mathematics. So let's look at so let's take let's take a look at some numbers that are that are irrational. Illness, irrational numbers cannot be written as a ratio of two numbers. For example, for example, square root, square root of of any number that is not a perfect square. The square root of any number that is not a perfect square. For example, for example, 9 is a perfect square. 9 is a perfect square. The square root of 9 would simply be 3. 25 is a perfect square. The square root would simply be 5. But these are perfect square. But if you take a square root of a square root and those can be written as a, as a ratio of two numbers. If I, if I tell you square root of 25, but well, that's just 5. And that 5 can be written as a ratio of two different numbers. You can write it as 10 over 2. You can write it as 20 over 4. You can write it in a million different ways. So square root of 5 is square root of 25. Because it's a perfect square, because it's a perfect square, it's a rational number. Because it is, it's going to end in a certain number which can be written as a ratio of two numbers. But instead of perfect square, if you happen to have square root of 3 or square root of 2, those are not perfect square. Pick up your calculator and do it out. If you, if you pick up your calculator and do it out, you will see that square root of 2 will go on as 1.4 on and on and on and on forever and ever. It never terminates. It never terminates, nor does it have any pattern, logic, or system. There is no pattern in this decimal. It never ends. And since it never ends, the square root of 2 cannot be written, cannot be written as a ratio, as a ratio of two numbers. And since it cannot be written as a ratio of two numbers, it's an irrational number. It cannot be written as a ratio. That's all it is. Here, irrational does not mean that it's not logical, it just means it cannot be written as a ratio of two numbers. Enough of that, okay? We don't need this thing. We don't need this, uh, uh, there are a couple of adjectives that come to my mind, which the YouTube will not let me use, so I won't use them. But we don't need any of this, okay? 
just, just, that's enough of that. Here's another example of a number that's an irrational number because it never ends and it has no pattern. If it never ends and has no pattern, it's irrational because you can't write it as a ratio of two numbers. The classic one, the most famous one is pi. Pi, if you were to pick up a calculator and look it up, or type in pi, it will say 3.14 something, 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 forever and ever and ever. It never, the bloody thing never ever ends. And since it never ends, we cannot write it as a ratio of two numbers. That's enough. Oh my lord, I don't know how long I took it. I don't know how long we, I took to talk about, to be able about something completely useless as far as we are concerned. Okay, let's look at the example. We are, on, we are on page number 143. Page 143. All they want us to do is compare numbers. They're going to give us three numbers or four numbers or maybe a pair of numbers and ask you to compare to see which one is greater. If they give you three or four, they will ask you to arrange, arrange those numbers either in increasing order or decreasing order. That's all it is. Let's look at one example. How about two-fifth, one-sixth, and four-fifteenth? Well, the simplest way to arrange this number in order, either in ascending order, increasing order, or descending order, is to have common denominator. As long as the denominators are the same, then we can compare the numerators. To make the denominator the same, we need to know their least, least common multiples. Now the reason we insist on having the least one is because if we have the least, uh, least possible one that we can find, we have to do less work, we have to do less math. How do we, and this is known as least common multiple, it's simply known as LCM. How do we find the LCM? of 5, 6, and 15. This is how we go about it. 5, we're going to look for the LCM of 5, 6, and 15. 5, 6, and 15. We pick, we, we look for common factors. There are 3 here, whether there are 3 or 4 or 5 or 20,000, doesn't matter. You look for common common factor among at least 2 of them, at least 2. If there are more than that, even better. So here I find a 5 and a 15. They, 5 and 6 have nothing in common. 5 is just a 1 times 5 and this is just 2 times 3. They have no common factor. But 15 is 3 times 5 and this is 5. So let's divide by 5. So if you divide 5 by 5 it becomes 1. 6 just comes down. Nothing happens to 6. It just comes down. And 15 divided by 5 is going to give us 3. And that's it. That's where it ends. Oh no. We can go one more. 6 and 3. Unless I made a mistake. No. That's correct. Let's go one more. So this is going to become 2 and this is going to become 1. There you go. 5 times 3 is 15 and 15 times 2 is 30. That's the least, that is the smallest number that is the multiple of 5, 6 and 15. 30 is the multiple of 50, 5 because 5 times 6 is 30. 30 is the multiple of 6 because 6 times 5 is 30. 30 is the multiple of 15 because 15 times 2 is 30. And that is the smallest one. It's not the only one. 30. 30 is the LCM. 30 is the LCM. LCM is 30. That's the least common multiple of 5, 6, and 15. There are other numbers that are multiple of 5, 6, and 13. If 30 is a multiple of 5, 6, and 30, then so is 60. And so is 60,000. And so is 30,000. So is 30 million. And so is 30 billion. We could use here 30 billion as a common multiple, uh, common multiple, but that will create a hell of a lot of work. So the smallest one is 30. Let's begin the work now. So now our job is to make make this denominator into 30. I see a 5 here. How do we convert this into 30? Well, we know 5 times 6 is 30. Why don't we, want, why don't we multiply top and bottom by 6 of this guy? I see a 6 here. How do we turn that into 30? Why don't we multiply top and bottom by 5? Now the bottom becomes 30. As long as you multiply both the top and the bottom by the same number, you're not changing its value because you're simply taking the 1 sixth and multiplying by 1. 5 over 5 is 1. Multiplying something by 1 does not change its value. How about this guy? How do we turn this into 30? Multiply top and bottom by 2. Voila. That's it. Now we're done. It's very simple. B 
we, now we can arrange them in order very easily. So this is so now since the bottom is the same, we no we no longer have to pay attention to what the bottom is. This is going to be twelve. This is going to be five, and that's going to be eight. There you go. So this is the smallest one, which means this guy one six is the smallest one. Then comes one eight, which was four fifteen, which came from four fifteen, and then comes five two fifth. Well, these are arranged in ascending order. They are arranged in ascending order, they are arranged in increasing order. You understand? Let's do one more, shall we? Let's do one more. I still don't know how long I babble about rational number. It is a very important topic for those who use it. It is a very important topic, but not for T's. We don't care. The math on the math on the T's is not not that not that complicated. They don't talk about rational numbers. Five fourth, nineteen twenty fifth, thirty seven over fifty, and finally seventy eight over one hundred. Why don't you do this yourself? Why don't you do this yourself? Pause the video, find the least common multiplier, and see what you can do with the thing. I'll give you a second for you to be able to pause and unpause the video. Okay. Okay, here we go. I hope, I hope that you were able to see without doing any work at all, without doing much work at all, that this is the biggest number here, which happens to be, which just happens to be by fluke. That was not the case in the previous example. This one just happens to be the fluke where this number 100 is a multiple of 50, 2 times 50. This number 100 is a multiple of 25, 4 times 25 is 100. And this number 100 is a multiple of 5, it's 20 times that. So why don't we convert everything into 100? Let's begin, shall we? Let's convert everything into 100. So, let's, let's take this guy and multiply top and bottom by 20 over 20. Why 20 over 20? Because 20 times 5 is 100. Let's take this guy and multiply top and bottom by 4. 4 times 25 is going to give us 100. Let's take this guy and multiply top and bottom by 2. One. And this is already 100, so we don't have to worry about it. So now we end up here, 20 times 4 is 80. 4 times 19, 4 times 20 is 80. 4 20s are 80, therefore 4, nine, 4 times 19 must be 76. 2 times 37, well I don't know what 2 times 37 is, but I know 2 times 35. 2 35s are 70. Oh, we don't have 35. We don't have 35 twos, we have 37 twos. We have two more twos. So if 35 times 2 is 70, if you have two more twos, it should be 74. And this is 78. There we go. Now we can arrange them. Smallest one is this guy, which, which came from here. So 37 times 50 is less than, there is 76, which came from here. 19 over 25, which is less than 78, which came from there. 78 over 100. And finally, this came from here. These are arranged in ascending order. If they ask us to arrange them in descending order, in decreasing order, you just do the other way around. You start from here. 4 fifth is greater than, it should be greater than, because we're decreasing now, greater than 78 over 100, which in turn is greater than 19 over 25, and which in turn is greater than 37 over 50. There you go, that's all it is. We'll meet, we'll meet tomorrow and we'll do a couple more, we'll, we'll do a few more examples and then on page number, if you turn the page, on the next page, on page number 144, there are some practice problems. We'll take care of all of that to, tomorrow and day after tomorrow, okay? I'll talk to you, I'll talk to you soon. In the meantime, if you wish to get hold of me, you can, you can always get hold of me. If you wish to work with me, if you would like to hire me as a tutor to get you ready for the exam, you can always get hold of me by sending me an email at kashwaniprep at icloud.com. Alright? Bye now.